All right, guys, Gemini, welcome back to the Gemini 8 at 8 channel. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. Okay, what has brought me to the dance here is what's making me make this video is on WrestlingDVDNetwork.com. They have um, shown us what the new Extreme Rules uh, pay-per-view DVD uh, is going to look like. I've seen the cover, and I'll show you guys the cover here in a few minutes. <laughs> Um, I'm not overly impressed with the whole Extreme Rules franchise. I never have been. Um, for me, if you're gonna you're gonna build a franchise, at least put some legacy behind it. At least make people stand up and say Extreme Rules. Yeah, let's explain. The franchise for me got off to a shaky start in the beginning when you start dubbing your pay-per-views. Extreme Rules. Considering on this pay-per-view, Vince McMahon became the ECW World Heavyweight Champion, which was a complete disgrace of that title. So, the franchise started off a little shaky. So, WWE, trying to build an Extreme Rules franchise, decides to skip the pay-per-view altogether and skip over to 2009. This right here is a classic example of a throwaway pay-per-view. When you start running two pay-per-views a month, like they did here and with the Bash 09, you're, you're uh, honestly, you're going to start running into people wanting to buy your pay-per-view. Two pay-per-views a month, way too much. Now, by 2010, um, the fans are already getting confused because I could sit here and I could look at Extreme Rules 2010 by the cover of it, and there isn't one match on here that I honestly remember without uh, having to look at the back. Okay, so Batista... And Cena. You know what? I do remember that match. That might have been the duct tape match. Past that, I, I honestly, this period does not stand out as memorable at all for me. Sheamus, I, I'm guessing, might have been right up there for the championship. I think he won a fatal four-way or something that year. Uh, moving forward to Extreme Rules 2011. Um, and now, what I remember about 2011, WrestleMania 27, which to me was... Eh, kind of a blah pay-per-view. Now, just off, off the top of my head, I'm remembering Cena possibly... Okay, so he did a triple threat match with John Morrison and The Miz. Ugh, I don't have any desire to pop this in. At this point, what, four or five years into the Extreme Rules franchise? Extremely turned off. Now, see, this is the best year for Extreme Rules right here with uh, Cena and Lesnar. That was an extreme match. Now, if they, this was this was awesome. Now, this was a type of main event where you could build a franchise around Extreme Rules by delivering high-quality matches just like that. Now, same deal with uh, 2013 uh, with Triple H and Brock Lesnar. Brock Lesnar is an extreme dude. He really is. And Triple H can fight extreme, too. Under the PG rating, PG banner, it's hard to build a franchise for Extreme Rules. Wow. I mean, look at the cover on here. And uh, tell me if it's just not something that's just thrown up quick. Although the one historic thing about Extreme Rules 2014 is the fact it's one it's Daniel Bryan's one pay-per-view uh, title defense after winning the belt at WrestleMania in 2014. Past that, I mean, just look at the cover and you're just like, wow. That's it? Same thing on Extreme Rules 2015. Uh, you just kind of look at that, and you just kind of have to just give it a big, a big wow. Um, lack of effort. Just, I mean, them just basically saying, hey, no one's going to buy this. Let's just Photoshop a uh, picture. With all that being said, let's talk about uh, the 2016 DVD, and then I'll show you guys the pictures here in just a sec. All right, with all that being said, you know, we moved to 2016. Um... Like I said, Wrestling DVD Network has the uh, pictures and stuff. There, WWE is showing me that with these these covers for the last two years that they really don't care, honestly, that much about selling it. I mean, the only Extreme franchise, Extreme Rules fran um, year that really stands out for me is the match in 2012 with Cena Lesnar. Past all these other Extreme Rules pay per views, I'm just like, wow. Even though this year was a really, really good show and stuff, you know, I mean, I, I 
I miss the days when they used to really do stuff like this and, and do really cool covers and uh, really take their time on their on their pay-per-views. And they used to really put the wrestlers over on the DVDs. And I just look at these and I'm just like, wow. There's a this Extreme Rules 2016 is a Walmart shelf filler, and uh, it, it's really not going to captivate and motivate um, the WWE universe to uh, go out and buy this. So, anyways, with all that being said, um, let's take a look at the pictures. Shut up, man. God, stupid cat. Um, anyways, with all that being said, let's take a look at the pictures. He's sick again, throwing up, and uh, we'll be done with this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Gemini. Have a good one. Alright, well, the video is supposed to be over, and Jim realized that he botched and he forgot to put um, One Night Stand Extreme Rules 2008. And I'll remember that match with uh, Edge and The Undertaker, but that's it. I'm not going to remember it much past that. So, yeah, Jim botched on that one. Anyways, have a good one.